Stained glass has an ability to impact both the interior and exterior of a space, but it doesn't just hold an aesthetic experience. It has the potential to hold much more than that. It has the potential to hold history, to tell stories. Stained glass began as features of places such as churches and cathedrals in Europe. This was a reference and metaphor to the book of Genesis and the act of God creating light. Light was associated with knowledge and power as well as God's protection. These displays showed images depicting biblical messages and inspiring scenes. The use of stained glass remained prevalent in the 12th and 13th centuries, but by the 18th century it was rarely made. It wasn't until the second half of the 19th century that stained glass was rediscovered by European artists and it began to make a steadfast comeback. It eventually made its way into America in the 1840s, around the time known as the Arts and Crafts Movement. The Arts and Crafts Movement began when William Morris and Friends started a firm dedicated to producing quality furnishings for public and private buildings. The glass became two-thirds of their business and was very popular. The producer of glass Morris's firm used was also a pioneer of this movement. While the arts and crafts movement in Europe was largely about reproducing medieval styles, the American movement featured regional variations. For instance, the Midwest believed that buildings should reflect the character of the landscape around them. Particularly, they focused on the relationships between the natural outside and the space inside. For example, designer Frank Lloyd Wright began expressing his desired characteristic motifs of a building through his prairie style glass. While these depicted no pictorial stories, he was inspired by American Indians and botanical themes. His designs serve as privacy screens, but still allow light to flow into the interior space. Around this time, plain sheet glass, known as float glass, became popular for artistic and decorative purposes. Like stained glass, Float glass manipulates light and is a more modern version of stained glass. The plain sheets are beveled, etched, or stained blasted to create the desired effect. Float glass is not typically used for the same traditional use as stained glasses is, but it can still capture light and color. The use of float glass is modernly known as architectural glass art. It has been emerging since the 1980s as an evolved version of stained glass. Glass art is now being recognized as a powerful way to transform spaces and environments, similar to what made stained glass popular. A worldwide revival in the use of glass as an architectural asset is now occurring. Stained glass and glass art are both extremely powerful in the way they affect a space. Its ability to transform the interior, depending on the time of day or even the season of year, is unique. It can change the external experience, Ex obscure external views, separate internal spaces, enclose spaces, or soften sunlight. We often think of glass as light, pure, and airy, but in reality it is made from dense rocks into a hard and heavy yet fragile material. This process now is the same process used to make glass in the Middle Ages. It begins with the primary ingredient, silica sand. Various chemicals are then added to lower the temperature needed for melting, remove impurities, add color, add durability, or add softness. These additives should take up no more than 30% of the mixture. The mixture then goes into a heat-resistant holder, electric melter, kiln, or gas-fired furnace where it is melted into a liquid. Depending on the additives used, the temperature can be anywhere from 2,732 degrees Fahrenheit to 4,172 degrees Fahrenheit. Bubbles and inconsistencies are removed by stirring and adding other chemicals such as sodium sulfate. At this point, the mixture is ready to be shaped into its desired use. For example, it can be poured into a mold or blasted with pressurized nitrogen. The glass is cooled down, then heat treated to strength and remove any stress points that may have formed during cooling. The next steps for creating a stained glass piece is to cut shapes out of a scale drawing. A strip of narrow lead is then placed around each piece of cut glass and put into its desired spot in the pattern according to the scale drawing. The pieces are joined by soldering them together on each side. Soldering is heating the lead to its melting point. 
from its humble beginnings to its current ensembles of extravagant displays stained glass has a history unlike any other and is continuing to grow its ability to not only transform light the very thing that allows us to see it in the first place but transform a space is remarkable